Okay, so today we will be doing the Bob 8E discussion, question three. Okay, when we have time, we'll come back to question two. So for now, we skip question two and we jump to question three. And what is question three? It is you have to, when you dig an imbangan duga to selaras. Okay, let me show, I will show you how to do the imbangan duga to selaras. And then, when you dig an kampadangan untung rugi, lastly, you have to do penyata kedudukan kewangan. And here are all the maklumat tambahan. So from here, there are different different things like hutang lapo, peruntukan hutang ragu. Can you see it? all these things are the things that we just learned from bab lapan? Okay, so you see gaji yang belum bayar, susut nilai mengikut kaedah baki berkurangan. Okay, so these are all the perasan, the adjustment that we need to make for this imbangan juga. All right, so question three, imangan duga. So this is the all the things are right, but then this is not completed yet because we still have to take in this malamatan bahan. We have to adjust it. Okay, I guess following. If yes, give me an F in the chat box, please. If you are following. Okay, all right. So. Now, let's start from number one. Okay, so normally when you're doing this kind of question, uh, you just go through the maklumat tambahan first, one by one, line by line, and then you share it because uh, in the exam, you are given the kertas tua. Okay, one is the kertas and then the other one will be a text pad, isn't it? So on this kertas that is given from the school, you can actually uh, scribble on top of the paper, isn't it? So now what you're going to do is, so let's read from the first Malamat Abahan. So inventory pada 30th April 2020 bernilai 5,720 pada harga kos dan 4,680 pada harga pasaran. Now, I already told you guys, we don't care about the cost atau pasaran. What we care is what? We just take the lower amount. So which one is a lower amount? The answer is 4,680. So this 4,680 will be our inventory up here. And where do we find our inventory hour? The inventory hour is always in this imbangan duga. So you look for inventory. Where is, yeah, yeah. So this is your inventory hour. And can you see the date? The date is... 1st May 2019. And our account is up until 30th April 2020. Can you see? That's why 30th April 2020 is our inventory RQ. So now, later we have to send this to our PKK and our account dengan. All right. Then number two. Insurance adalah untuk setahun yang berakhir pada 31st July 2020 now. They are telling us that this insurance is for satu tahun. Satu tahun ada dua belas bulan. Korang nak? Berakhir bila? 31st July 2020. Yeah, first thing first. How much have we paid for the insurance? Berapa yang kita telah bayar? So you go to Imangan Duga and look for the Insurance. So insurance, insurance. Um, this one. Two thousand four hundred. Okay, there is another insurance is atas belen, but we don't care about this one. Okay, now the insurance that we are talking about is this insurance, which is two thousand four hundred. And this two thousand four hundred, yeah, lah, but after the thirty first July. So if we draw a timeline. Dia berakhir pada 31st July bila 2020. And dia cakap ini, insurance ini, is for satu tahun. So if you work back satu tahun, how much? How, 
how how long was it when was it so the one year sebelum 31st july 2020 will be first of august 2019 all right so from 8 august august september october november december then january 2020 january february march april may june july to june 31st july 2020 so that is up to 12 months one year right now so meaning this 2400 is for this one whole year from 1st august 2019 some by 31st july 2020 but then the question now is when are we preparing for our account up to when up to 30th april 2020 tahun berakhir 30th april mah meaning this thing we can only record sampai 30th april 2020 you get it so meaning this is the part that we have to record in our account untung rugi so how many months here so august it must starting from 1st august 2019 so august september october november december january february march april so there are sembilan bulan nine out of 12 months and then from here after 30th april will be what may my right so may june july so that is three months three out of 12 and when you add 9 over 12 plus 3 over 12, it equals to 12 months. You get what I mean? So meaning this part, 9 over 12, we have to times 2,400, we, we will get... How much? 2,400 times 9 over 12, you will get 1,800. And this 1,800 will be the insurance yang sebenar all right just uh, sebenar all right now and then the remaining the 2400 times 3 over 12 which is 600 is actually what you this is what you have paid extra because kita belum sampai 31st July lagi. We just end on 30th April. So after 30th April, what we have paid is you buy a little bit. You pay extra. So you pay extra in accounting is called a pra baya. And when you pay extra, a pra baya will go into your asset. This is what we have learned in your lapan A. Okay, the, your but a a the account nominal the part belum bayar belum terima prabaya belum terpoli. Okay, all these things we learn from there. All right, so make sure later you know how to record for this part. All right, then next, so there is an insurance prabaya and the insurance. Okay, so that is for the insurance part. Now, the third one, hutang labu dihapus ialah 320, meaning we kita ada hutang lapuk lah, right? So, is there any hutang lapuk written here? Is there any other hutang lapuk in the imbangan juga? Tak ada. Right now, see, if there is no hutang lapuk kat sini, so what we're going to do is you write another hutang lapuk to remind yourself that there is a hutang lapuk. Um, lapo three hundred and twenty ringgit. And what I told you is, when you have a hutang lapo yang dalam makmula tambahan, you have to minus out from your account belum terima. So account belum terima one three one two o oh, you minus three hundred twenty. That's it. 
minus from here. All right, then next. Number four. PHR, penguntukan hutang raga hendaklah diselaraskan kepada 4% atas account belum terima. So there is a PHR that we have to calculate. It's 4% atas ABT. So let's calculate. So if PHR equals to your ABT bersih. So now, 1, 3, 1, 2, 0, minus 320. Okay, because tadi ada hutang lapok. So you have to minus out the hutang lapok. And then, times berapa persen? 4 persen. So you get how much? 1, 3, 1, 2, 0, minus 320, times 4 percent, we get 5, 1, 2. Okay? And then after you get this PHR, we have to check, is there any PHR from last year? Meaning you have to look in your imbangan duga. Ada PHR dalam sini lah? Eh, ada. It's 866. But what I told you is, whenever you see a peruntukan gunang ragu in the imbangan duga, maksudnya this PHR is from apa? last year. Okay, this is this year. Punya. What we calculated is this year. What you see here is last year. So it's last year is 866 and this is 512. So tell me, is it this year the year turun atau dia naik? The answer is you from 866, you berkurang sampai 512. Meaning there is a pengurangan PHR. Correct or not? How much is that? You used 866 last year bunya PHR minus this year's 512. Then you, you will know how much is the pengurangan, right? 860 minus 51. Eh, sorry, 866. 866 minus 512. You get 354. And I put it on the credit side. Why? Because it is a hasil. Remember your abalim? Ah, we need abalim when we are doing the question, the imbangan duga. All right, so hasil is on the credit, belanja is on the debit. Therefore, hutang lapo is on the debit side, pengurangan PHR is on the credit side. All right, and then we have to record PHR also uh, down here. All right, so. Uh, you know, okay, PHR, or if you want, we can put it, learn it, okay, you just put here, you know, later you got PHR. Okay, next. One, two, three, four, number five. Angkutan ke ruang sebanyak 250 telah tersilap rekod sebagai angkutan masuk. Let me read it again. Angkutan ke luar sebanyak 250. So, meaning there is a angkutan ke luar. Okay, 250. Tapi you tersilap record sebagai angkutan masuk. Meaning, I accidentally put into my angkutan masuk. So now I have to take out from my angkutan masuk and put it into my angkutan keluar. That's why they check up this amount is wrongly record. So what is your angkutan masuk? You take out from your angkutan masuk. So your angkutan masuk, sini, 770. So out of this 770, 250 is for your angkutan keluar. Alright, so I have to 770 minus out 250. And this 250 is going to where? This 250 should be a angkutan keluar. So you add it into your angkutan keluar 250. All right now, I'll give you 10 seconds to read number four again. Angkutan keluar, uh, you read and try to understand. I give you 10 seconds. All 
right? So after you're reading this, and then look at this one. So this is how we record for all these things. So same thing. If they say uh gaji sebanyak 250 tersilap record sebagai kada bayaran. So what you're gonna do is you take out your minus, you tolak daripada your kada bayaran, and then you add back, you tambah into your gaji. So same thing for here. So you take out from your angkutan masuk and then you put it back into your angkutan keluar. So you take out your minus, you put it back into angkutan keluar. So this is how we record. Okay, next. Gaji belum bayar pada tertiat April 2020 berjumlah 1,340. Now, I already told you, whenever we are recording for our account, don't go ye, we want to use the amount yang sebenar, the gaji yang sebenar. The insurance yang sebenar. So when you pay extra, I have to take it out. So when you pay less, meaning I have to add it back. You get I me? Mean? So gaji berapa yang telah dibayar? Gaji kita telah dibayar 9,720. This is the amount yang kita telah bayar. Tapi is this the amount yang sebenar? Is this the gaji yang sebenar? The answer is no. Because here the question say, ada gaji belum bayar yang berjumlah 1340. So I have to add 1340 to get the gaji yang sebenar. And at the same time, there is a gaji belum bayar. So when you have a gaji belum bayar, gaji belum bayar belum masuk ke mana? Perlu masuk to your liability. When you talk about liability, meaning liability should go into your PKK. Okay, gaji belum bayar, 1340. Okay, later we have to record this. Okay, lastly, kenderaan disusutnya pada 10% kaedah bagi perkurangan. What is the formula for kaedah bagi perkurangan? You use your cost minus your SMT, susutnya terkumpul, and then times the percentage. So in this question, look at it. Kenderaan cost is 60,000. The susun net kumpul kenderaan is 3,200. So you just work out the formula lah, right? So, cost is 16, 16,000 minus 3,200 times how many percent? 10 percent. So what do you get? So this will be your susun nilai. One thousand two hundred and eighty. All right. So this is your susut nilai for kendaraan. One thousand two hundred and eighty susut nilai kendaraan. Okay, so let's do the question. So now we have to do imbangan duga tersaras. So how do you do for imbangan duga tersaras? Okay, and then this one has, by the way, this one you have to add 1,280. So remember this one, I told you the susut ni terkumpul will be for last year also. So this year punya, you have to change it lah, right? So you have to add the this year's susun nilai, which is 1,280, to your SNT. So now, take out your buku nota, and we have to do 3A. 3A is your imbangan duga tersaras. So the name is Zach and the price and then imbangan duga. So what we're doing now, imbangan duga tersalaras, tersalaras, ada. Put 
Ringgit Malaysia, Ringgit Malaysia. So how does your Ibangan juga look like? So it's the same thing. Okay, so Ibangan juga you have the debit credit. Okay, so so okay, debit, debit. That's it. So after that, very simple. Just copy and paste what you see here into here because we are doing a Ibangan juga. So the thesaurus is actually all the pelarasan yang kita ada. So you have to add the addition information into your imbangan duga. That's why it's called imbangan duga thesaurus. All right. So I'll show you how to do it. So you just follow. So what you see here, you just put it in first. So you, you number ada kenderaan cost susut nilai terkumpul kenderaan akan belum terima dan akan belum bayar modal pada 1 Mei 2019 ambilan bank inventory pada 1 Mei 2019, duty, import, pulangan, masuk dan pulangan, keluar, angkutan, masuk. So just type all in. Okay, just write on your book. Belanja, um, angkutan. Masuk alat tulis insurance kada bayaran gaji diskon simpanan tetap Sewa, belanja pos, peruntukan, hutang, ragu, belian, dan jualan, upah, insurance atas belian. Ini pun yang ada figure. So, kenderaan, 16,000. Okay. So, just put it back into the debit. Debit, then you put in debit. Okay, now, for susut ni, terkumpul kenderaan. Can you see? Just have to you, this SMT is actually for last year. So, if this is for last year, now, after we did the susut ni, like, we get the 1,280 for this year, then we have to add it into the susut ni, like, yang terkumpul. Terkumpul meaning, you add up all the year. Every year, susut nilai and then add them up. Okay, become cumulative, terkumpul. So now, 3,200 is up to last year. And then I have to add this year, 1,280. So the susut nilai terkumpul kenderaan becomes, you can break it, you can show working, 3,200 plus 1,280. And then you get 3,200 plus 1,280. You get 4,400. 180. So you put it into credit side, credit side. Okay, then ABT, just now you know we, we got some changes, isn't it? So uh the 1000, so 13,120 minus 320. Oh, do we get? We get 12,800. Okay, because you minus the 320. Which is a hutang lapo. So if there is a minus, you minus out. And then do we have any changes, adjustment to the account balloon buyer? 10,790? No, then you put it back. So 10,790. Then more down, you just put it back. We don't do any changes. Ambilan, no changes. Bang, no changes. It uh sorry five thousand eighty inventory hour we put back inventory hour two thousand five hundred sixty so you can see all this model hour and inventory hour just put it there only okay we don't make any changes 
Okay, duty import put back 656. 1040 and for pulangan Corais 920. Okay, by the way, pulangan masuk means pulangan what? Belian or jalan. So if you're not sure sometimes, look at your pulangan jalan. Oh, sorry, you, your Berlin and your Jualan. Where's our Berlin and Jualan? Huh? How come I didn't see my Berlin and Jualan in this question? Do we have Berlin and Jualan in this question? Berlin and Jualan. Oh, here. Berlin and Jualan, right? So this one is Berlin. Nah. And this one is Jualan. Correct or not? So if you're not sure Pulangan Masa or Pulangan Kelot is a Berlin or Jualan and they do it this way, so very simple, all you're going to do is just cross the line up, right? So if Berlin is 53,100 and you draw the line over here, da, 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 da. so even though you see it is a Pulangan Kelot, but you're not sure what is Pulangan Kelot, if then you can draw this line. So based on this line, Berlian is here. So this one will be a Pulangan Berlian. So the same goes to this one. So if 73,000 is the Jualan, if you cross the line over to here, then we know that this is actually a Pulangan Jualan. Right, so you know that actually Pulangan Jualan is a Pulangan Masuk and Pulangan Berlian is a Pulangan Kerma. It's the same thing. Excuse me. Right. So let's continue. So uh, okay, then we go to Angkuta Masuk. So for this Angkuta Masuk, we got changes as well. So just now you saw that there is a Kasilapan where uh, it should be Angkutan Keloa. Sorry, this should be Angkutan Keloa. But I recorded it as a Angkuta Masuk. So now I have to take it out. So that's 250. So 770 minus 250, you get 520. Right? Then the Belanger arm, no changes. So you put it back 624. And Kutan Kelua, yes, there is a changes. So I have to add it back. So the 590, I add back the 250. So 590 plus 250, 840. Alat, list 4, 5, 6. Insurance. Okay, so I told you there's a changes for insurance. We want to record apa yang sebenar for this year up until 30 April only. So how did we did that was we used 2,400 times how many months? 9 over 12 which is the working for this one, this one, okay? So you will get how much? 1,800. Kada bayaran, no changes, 640. And then your gaji, yes, there is some adjustment. You use 9,720. We add how many, how much? 1,000. 240. So 1,240 is the gaji yang belum bayar. So we add it in. You get 11,060. And there is a discount. 446 and 676. Now, whenever you see a discount, something like that. So how do we know if this is a discount debury or this is a discount debury? So very simple, use your abalim. I told you the B, the debit side is always the belanja. So if the 446 is on the debit side, meaning this is a discount, debury. Can you see it? And 676 is on the credit side, meaning this is a hasil. If this is a hasil, meaning this is a discount yang diterima. Very simple. Okay, then simpanan tetap, your saving, your fixed deposit, 30,000. Saver, so same thing. So when you see saver, 5,700 is on the debit side, meaning this is a belanja. So this is a saver yang D by, yeah. The bracket need to show, you mean all these things, the working. Uh, 
it's better that you show, okay? Nothing wrong to show it because when you show, you know what you're doing, right? So next time when you're referring, doing revision, or you want to check your answer, you will know, hey, how do we get this figure? So you can go come to this bracket and see, oh, I'm using 9,720 plus 1,340. So this is actually like you're working. And in your exam, if this answer is wrong, but your working is correct, that's actually marked for your working. That's why I strongly encourage all of you to, to show the working, okay, as in like the bracket. All right. And then let's move on to the Belanger post is 920, no changes. The Peruntukan Hutang Ragu. Now, this Peruntukan Hutang Ragu, like I said, because this is last year, Bunya, just like your Susunya Tekumpu, you have to update it. Okay, you have to update to Tahun Ini Bunya PHR. So how did we do was use this calculation, right? So we are actually using the uh sorry, uh yeah, 13,000, right? 13,120, the ABT, right? Minus the 320, which is our uh hutang lapo, and then we times the four percent. Right. This is how we come to this figure of. 512 this year. Can you see? So we have to replace this figure with 512. And PHR is on the credit side. Okay, then your bullion in Jalan 53,173,000. Then your UPA is 1,450. And your insurance atas bullion is 480. All right. Is it that all? The answer is no. All right. So these are all the information that's ready in the imbangan dugo. Now we have to add the additional. Conto, your prabaya, your gaji belum bayar, your hutang lapo, your pengurangan PHR, your susut nila. All these things you have to add it, or else your imbang dugo tak akan berimbang. You can try it after you've done this. You just try to add up everything. You see that you cannot inbound. But check for yourself. You see? Not the same. And in you know, an duga, we must have balanced figure, isn't it? So now, add back all the additional information. So from here, we got the insurance prabaya. How do we get that? We're using the 2,400 times the remaining three months. Tadi ini adalah sembilan bulan, ini go into your accountant rugi sebenar. This prabaya, uh, over the three months benar, we go into the PKK as an asset. Okay? So how much you get? 2,400 times three over 12. And we know this is an asset, an asset should be in the debit or credit side. The asset should go into the debit side. Look at the A, A here, asset. So it's in the debit side. Let's continue. So PHR already here, ma. Already record this one, okay? Then uh, the gaji belum bayar. So gaji belum bayar. So how much your gaji belum bayar? The answer straight will tell you is one thousand three hundred and forty here. Correct, right, One thousand three hundred forty. And this gaji, I told you, a belum bayar is a a liability and a liability should show on the like L is where in the credit side. Therefore, your figure 1340 should be in the credit side. Done for your gaji belum bayar. Next, your hutang lapo. Okay, your hutang lapo. Your hutang lapo is a belanja. I told you that's why the 320 I put it in the Debit side because the belanja the aba b is in the debit side. Okay, then we go to the pengurang. You have to record for the pengurangan PHR as well. Okay, per pengurangan peruntukan hutang ragu. So how do we get this? You can show it out as well. You are using the O eight hundred sixty six PHR minus this year's uh PHR which is five hundred and twelve. Then we get 354. 354. And the pengurangan, I told you, this is a hasil. 
Pertambah pH A, belanja. Pengurangan pH A is a hasil. That's why hasil is in the credit side 354. Alright, this take note of this one. And then lastly, your susut nilai. It's not susut nilai terkumba, this is the susut nilai kenderaan. And how do you calculate this one just now? We're using the 16,000, the cost. You just copy this working, 16,000 minus the 3,200. What is 3,200? The S&T just now. Okay, in the beginning, 3,200. And then times the percentage given, the 10%. Okay, then we get a figure. Then, and this is like is a belanja, so it is on the debit side. So we get one two eight zero. Okay, so this is on the debit side. Susut nilai terkumpul is on the credit. Susut nilai is on the debit. Credit debit. So I think that's all, right? So at the end. Draw one line double line for debit and credit side. Then you jump now. Use your calculator plus one by one. Uh, and at the end, get a figure. I do not correct. See. A. Number other difference. So let me see what is the difference. So that is wrong, right? Okay. So you check. Nine ringgit of difference. Normally, nine ringgit of difference meaning I there is a figure error. All right. So, figure error that I have to check. Uh, okay. So, maybe sometimes I put like six, nine, I put nine, six like that. So, I have to check properly. Okay. So, let me double check again. Two, eight, three, double, seven, two, five, six, zero, oh, six, five, six, one, zero, four, zero, six, two, four. Eight four zero four five six six four zero. This is Gaji. One thirty four zero four four six thirty thousand five thousand seven hundred fifty two one four. Oh, okay. See this upa one thousand four hundred fifty. What I put one four five nine. Okay. Right, but then of course in exam, yeah, I'm talking about in exam, uh, the real exam. When you are doing this kind of question, I don't care if it's imangan duga terselaras or account berdagangan or PKK. When the the figure, the amount that imbang, okay, you can do a first checking. You can spend like five minutes. Okay, just go a fast check. And if you still cannot get inbound, then you just leave it. Okay, let me repeat again. Just leave it. Skip it and go to the next question. After you've done the, all the questions that you have to do, then if you still have time, then you can come back to this same question and find out the, the part that you don't get inbound. Okay, because it is too wasted if you spend your whole time just to find for that one small error. And that one small error will only cost you about one to three marks, which is very less. Okay, even it helps you to inbound, you just you can just get extra one mark or two mark. It doesn't help at all. All right. So it is stupid, or it is, I mean, it's really stupid. Lah, okay, if you just Focus on that one small tiny arrow. Just you can just get extra one mark, and you miss out the one whole question from the paper, which is about twenty marks. You got know what I mean. So if you don't get in bang at the first place, don't ganjong. Don't feel nervous. All right, calm yourself down. Make sure your 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 brain or your mindset is strong enough, just move on. Don't care about it. You know that it doesn't matter at all. Then you just move on to the 
next question and do 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 finish everything other 10 minutes lagi other 20 minutes lagi then you come back to here and then you look for the error i guess clear if yes give me a c in the chat box because one of the key to score high mark or to get a in accounting is to learn time management okay you have to you just have to learn and i'm still learning to be honest with you guys like um because i'm still studying i'm still doing exam for myself and then when you come to professional level for accounting they give i got three hours for my paper okay so i got three hours at tiga jam ah, for four questions only okay but but of course each question is very long and it can take up to one or two hours just for one question. That's why time management is very important. That's why I'm still learning. All right. So four questions, 100 marks, but you got three hours to do. And then if, and each question, if you don't get in bang, okay, you don't balance it and you spend your time on it, you only got three hours. And each question, it requires a lot of time. So you have to plan your time well, okay? Good enough for you allocate for each question, okay? So once the time's up, then you, we have to move on to another question or else this question will drag the time from question two and the question two will drag the time from question three and at the end, you will fill your paper for sure. Yeah, that's like the advanced professional level for accounting. Lah. So when you want to become an accountant, uh, a chartered accountant uh, in your future, a professional, then uh, these are the pathway that you have to go through, have to sit for exam and so on. Uh, then that's a review. But for SPM, to be honest, is very simple, very basic level. So you just have to know the concept and then you can manage your time then and surely you can get A or even A plus for your uh, accounting your SPM. All right, so please take note of that. Time management is the key. All right, so let's continue. So this is the answer for your imangan duga terselaras. Okay, so this is the A, and then this uh normally they don't come on your exam. Okay, even they do, the mark is not too much because it's very simple. You just copy, isn't it? All we did just was just copy from here and then we just do the uh, adjustment accordingly the real deal is in b and c the account berdagangan dan account untung rugi and in your real exam you don't have to do all these things if the question didn't ask you to open okay if the question didn't ask you to do you don't have to do this okay so we can actually skip this if the question never see that. But in this question, we have to do. Okay. But then normally in the exam is B and C. The account berdengan untung rigi and P. Okay. So now we're going to do that. So B, same thing. Make sure you have the name of the company. And after that is the tajuk, the title for this account. So the name is the AZ, right? AZ and the price. Is in the price, and then we are doing a account perdagangan dan untung rugi bagi tahun berakhir third third not thirty first thirty eight April twenty twenty. So all this exam will give you the format. You have to remember the format for account berdengan dan untung rugi. Okay, ring in Malaysia, ring in Malaysia. So let's go. So account, but let's start from account berdengan. Right? So first thing first, kita memang ada jualan. So in this question, do we have jualan, pulangan jualan? The answer is yes. In here is called pulangan masuk. So we have to minus pulangan masuk. So if the question give you pulangan masuk, then we just use pulangan masuk lah. Okay, jalan 
Kalau pulangan masuk, pulangan jalan, you get what? Jualan bersih. Alright, so let's put it in. So the jualan, you... okay, so you can either take out from your imbangan duga terseras, okay, but once again, as I said just now, in your exam, they hardly ask you about imbangan duga terseras. So for safety purpose, we learn to share away, take out information from here. Even though this is the complete adjusted one, but we can just ignore it and take it out from here. Okay, so this is better because normally question have this one, like, like this one, like question four. They just straight away ask you to do berdagangan dan unung wigi and PKK. So from here, we, we have to straight away take out information from here and do our account berdagangan. Right? So, we have to learn. So how? Look for jualan. Okay, where is jualan, jualan, jualan? Here. So jualan is 73,000 and then there is no adjustment. How do we know if there is adjustment? Look at all these things. That's why I say you just scribble on your paper. If you saw that maklumat tambahan cakap perlu tambah minus, plus minus, you just put it beside it. So that when you're doing your imbangan, sorry, when you're doing your account berdagangan and PKK, you know that, oh, this one I have to minus out. This one I have to add it. Okay? So you, have, you don't have to do a double work. Right? So jualan no changes, you just put 73,000. Pulangan masuk, pak. Uh, punya masa is 1040 so minus 1040 so your jalan bersih 73,000 minus 1040 you get 71,960 so after your jalan bersih bracket minus your cost jalan underline so in your cost jalan the first thing first is actually your your event there, isn't it? Your event there. So how much is my inventory award? Inventory award you take out from here. I told you the inventory that is shown in your imangan duga is the inventory award. Always. Okay, guarantee. So put in the middle. 2,560. And your bullion. And then the bullion we have, pulangan bullion. Right. So here, they call it a pulangan keluar. Okay. So here, your bullion, you call your bullion 53,100. And then you minus your pulangan keluar which is 920, which is a pulangan belian, 920. So you minus first. So use your 53,100 minus your pulangan keluar, you get 52,180. So this one is your belian bersih. Okay, so after that, after you get your Belian bersih. Do you still remember the thing that I taught you before? The RD. A for angkutan masuk. U for upah atas belian. D for duty import. I for insurance atas belian. And then look for your here. Is there this four thing or one of it? So we got anggota masuk. So you put it in. So add anggota masuk. Anggota masuk is how much? Uh, so here you have to use 770 minus 250. Because this, we use the latest figure, the updated figure. Okay, you don't use 770 anymore because that's the old one. So, the past we have to use the latest one, 520. AU, do we have upa atas belian? Eh, ada upa, tapi ada 
Atas belian. Is that the word atas belian? No. So therefore, we cannot record here. All right. Next, duty import. Do we have duty import? Yes, duty import here. So we in. much 656 <coughs> you have insurance atas belian yes insurance atas belian here take note insurance and insurance atas belian are two different things okay insurance atas belian go into account berdengan insurance into account so it's different thing huh? And angkutan masuk and angkutan keluar is so a different thing. Angkutan masuk go into perdagangan. Angkutan masuk, I mean, angkutan masuk go into perdagangan. Angkutan keluar go into untung rugi. So it's different thing. So, so insurance atas belian is 480. There's a line here. So add up everything and put here. So this one we will call it like a cost billion. So add up with the cost billion, you get 56,396. This one we call it a cost barang untuk di Then we have to, last one we have to minus the inventory up. Okay, this is the format. You can find it in the nota that I've given to you uh, for form 4. Or you can go to your buku text. It's all there, the format, right? So how much is the inventory IQ? Here, go to your, always go to your maklumat tambahan to look for the inventory IQ. And what I say, choose the lower amount, amount yang terendah. So which one is terendah? 4,680. That's why you choose this one and minus. So you minus, you put here. And this one we call it a cost. Jalan. What happened next? Do we add them up? The answer is no, because this is a cost. Jalan, ma. So we have to minus out to know how much yang kita telah untung. Right now. That's why here I put a minus in front. So therefore, this one should be in bracket. So you 71,960 minus a cost Jalan, you get 20,244. This is a untung kasa. So we already completed account perdagangan. So this is account perdagangan. All right. So after account perdagangan, we have to do the second part, which is the untung rugi. So let's continue. So in your untung rugi, there are two things. You have to minus, sorry, you have to plus hasil and minus belanja. And then you get your untung bersih. So straight away, plus hasil. So what hasil do we have? So very simple. If you want to look for your hasil, just go to your credit side because as you can see in your abalim, the LHM, the H is in the credit side. So your hasil memang is in the credit side. So you, you go one by one. Susun yang tergumpu? No. Susun yang tergumpu is in the PKK. ABB is a liability. So no model, no pulangan. We did record in the account perdagangan. So we can skip it. 976 is a discount. Discount apa? I already told you. The one on the credit side is a hasil. Therefore, this is a discount determiner. And discount determiner is a hasil. So you put here, discount determiner. So you put here, how much is that? Nine, sorry, six, seven, six. And PHR, no. You don't record PHR. PHR is, should be in the PKK. But then, that's one thing that we have to record here. Why is this now? There is a pengurangan PHR. Okay? And I say a pengurangan PHR is a what? Is a hasil. And if it's a hasil, we have to record here. 
pengurangan peruntukan hutang ragu. And we can show the working if you want by using the 866 minus 512. And we get 354. Is there any other thing else? After that will be the draw line. John is already here recorded. So there is no other figure in your credit side. Then we can jumlahkan because that's all for the ASIL. So after you get this figure, you can add up first, right? Okay, you can add up with the untung kasa to get the latest figure. So 20,244 minus 1,030, you get 21,274. And then continue, go and minus out from your belanja. So the belanja will be focusing on the debit side, right? So debit side, you go. Kenderan, no, because Kenderan is an asset. Asset in the PKK. ABT is an asset. Ambilan, Ambilan is in the PKK. Bank is in the PKK. When I say PKK, means penyata kedudukan kewangan. This is not a PKK. This is a account berdengan dan untung rugi. Alright? Inventory, not here. Duty import, already recorded just now. Remember the RD in the berdagangan here. Duty import sudah record. Pulangan sudah angkutan masuk sudah belanja am sudah tak belum lah okay so put here belanja am this belanja am is a belanja so belanja am 624 okay next angkutan keluar here juga okay and then for this angkutan keluar ada changes lah right can you see the sign here that's why I say it's very good that you you draw she always scribble and write down the note beside each figure so that you know uh, we have to plus or minus. You won't forget. Okay, then you put here. So 590 plus 250, we get 840. So that's your anggota keluar. So remember, anggota keluar is in your account to rugi. And then alat tulis. Alat tulis. So this is a belanja as well. Huh? This is like you're buying stationery. Because this is a small figure, that's why we cannot put it as an asset. Because for an asset, you have to use it for like a long term. All right? So we cannot put a lot to this as an asset. And for asset, right, you have to have the ability to earn money, to generate cash. But then, a lot to this other, da, da other. that's why we cannot put it here. We cannot put it as an asset. We put it as like a belanja. And it's just 456. Did, isn't it weird to have 456 in your asset? All right, so that's why we put it as a belanja. Next is your insurance. So just now remember, so this one we should, I mean, you should have cancelled it out and put the right figure here, 1,800, so that we know. All right, so this is a sabana. So how do we get that? We're using 2,400 times 9 over 12. So this is the insurance that we record. Always record the belanja yang sebenar. Hasil yang sebenar. Bukan apa yang kita telah bayar. Ada bayar run. 640. Gaji. Gaji ada perubahan. Okay, 9,720 plus 1,340. So 20 plus 1240, you get 11,060. All right. So set, set, discount. Okay. So there is a discount determinant and discount debris. How much? The one on the debit side, 446. So we put it in 446. So tetap is an asset. So PKK. Sewer on the debit side. So this is a sewer yang dibayar. Sewer 5,700. Belanja post. 920. Untungan hudang ragu. 
is credit. Berlian already recorded. Opa, don't forget. 1450. And then, Israel Adas Berlian, that is our record. Remember, here in the RD 480, we already record, so we don't have to record here. If you record here again, meaning there's a double record. If you double record it, memang at the end, you won't inbound it. Okay, so make sure you don't double record it. Okay, then don't forget, always remember after every figure that you go through in your imbangan duga, you have to check back to the extra thing that you have written from your maklumat tambahan. So what are the extra thing? Hutang lapo. Hutang lapo is a belanja. Don't forget. So we have to put it in. 320. And then what else? The susu nilai, don't forget. Susut nilai kenderaan. How do you get that? Maybe you can show the working here. Oops, 10 percent. So we get thousand twenty eighty. Right? Is there anything else? Maybe you can put here. Blah 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 blah. No. Okay. So make sure. After you check the one from Imbangan Dugal, and then don't forget to go through the one that you've written. So that's why I say always, if you can, you write neatly the, the addition uh, information that you have to add into your account. account. All right? Because if you, put it, if you don't write it out, very easy to forget. That's why I like to write it out to remind myself. So I see, hey, what is this? Oh, yeah, well, I have to record this. So you show it, put it in. Okay, so. I think that's all. You can sum up all the belanja. And because this is a belanja, and you see a minus in front, therefore we should bracket it. Okay, so use this one, the latest one, minus. The 25,536, and we get 42,000, sorry, 4,262. That is a minus, right? So you bracket it. So this is a what? By the way, this is a final ready. So you one line, double line. So if it is a bracket, meaning this is not a untung, it becomes a Rugi and this is a Rugi Basit. You see, it's not always that we give your undung, but most of the time, 70% of the question will be untung lah, right? But then for this question, it's a Rugi. Rugi means you get from your untung kasa plus your hasil, but yet the belanja is more than that. And then you will get a negative figure. Then that is your Rugi Basit. Right. You guys done? If done, give me a D in the chat box. Let me know if you're done. No, no, I'll give you some time. I give you two minutes, right? Two minutes to complete everything. Okay, but if you're done, then you put a D. So for those already done, Maybe you can go for a toilet break or if you're not planning for a toilet break, you can attempt question C, the Penyata Kudang Kewangan. Right, but let's give two minutes to those that are still uh, copying or you're doing for this Pedangan uh, Udong Right? So until 9.30, uh, 38 lah, okay?
All right. 38. So let's continue and finish up the C part. Menyediakan penyata kedudukan kewangan pada 30 April 2020. So if you have not done, just take photo of it and then later you just finish up after the class. Okay. So for PDK, same thing. Okay. So it's the same format. You should have a name and the tajo. So I'm going to scroll down and go for the C. Same thing, Malaysia, Malaysia, Malaysia. So the first thing first is your asset bukan semasa. And then under your asset bukan semasa, normally I ask you to do the cost, you show the cost. Your susut nilai terkumpu, in this case, you have to write the whole thing uh, in the exam. Susut nilai terkumpu, but here I don't have enough space, so I just put s and in short. So that will be a nilai buku and then the jumlah. Okay, so here, what is the asset? Bukan semasa, I think there's only one which is a kenderaan. But then normally there are a few like two to three asset bukan semasa for you. Okay, so what is the cost? So the cost is 16,000. It's always the same unless you, you buy a new uh, asset bukan semasa, you buy a new kenderaan. Or else the cost will always be 16,000. Because the cost is the amount that uh, we pay apabila kita beli kenderaan itu. So it's always fixed. So the only thing that would change is the S&T susunan terkumpu. So which that case, we already said, use a 3,200 plus this year's so which is 1280. And then what do you get? And then you bracket it. So 3200 plus 1280, we get 4480. So this will be the susut nya to kumpu up to 30th April 2020. So the latest one. So your nilai buku use the 16,000 minus your S&T 4480, this one minus this one, and then you get 11,520. And that one straight away go into your Joomla. All right. So this is for your s and Master Kenderaan. And at the same time, if you remember what we saw is the simpanan tetap 30,000. What is cement tetap? Cement tetap is like a fixed deposit. You put money there and then they lock it for a few, few years. Okay, beberapa tahun. So that will be considered asset bukan semasa because it is more than one year. So normally when you see cement tetap, you just put it into asset bukan semasa. So you should put it into jumlah because there is, there's no cost, no s and for, uh, sorry, for simpanan tetap. So you just, Put it into the jumlah thirty thousand. So your total S and T, sorry, your total asset bukan semasa will be forty one thousand five hundred and twenty. The next thing will be your asset semasa. So your asset semasa, go back to your debit side and look for your asset semasa because I told you asset is always in the debit side. So, ABT, right? So, your account will be now. Yeah, please take note of this part. So, for your account will be 
Can you see or not? I, do, I did an adjustment here. 13,120. I have to minus 3,220. Then only I show my ABT. But then I put it on this line because there is a peruntukan hutang ragu. So whenever there is a peruntukan hutang ragu, you have to minus it out from your ABT. Is it? So I put here. So the ABT will be 13120 minus 320. We get 12,800. And then from here, the PHR, how do we get this figure? If you want, you can actually show it. We are actually using 13120 or this ABT figure, correct or not? We are using the ABT per se, 12,800 times the 4% from the question. So you get 5.2, and this is a minus three bracket. Because can you see it working here? The PHR 13120 minus 320. So it's actually the same thing. It's actually a BT per se. So if you minus, you get 12800. That's why it's 12800 times 4%, we get 512 as well. So after you minus, you put here. So you use this one, 12800 minus your per hutang ragu, you get 12288. So that would be your ABT. All right, so make sure always when you have a PHR, you have to minus it out from your ABT. So after your ABT, what else? Your bank. So your bank, you just should put it in the middle line or middle column, 5080. Inventory. So when you see inventory, we don't take this one. We take what? Inventory. This is, can you see now? The inventory is on 1st May 2019. The inventory that we want is on the 30th April. Why is it on the 30th? Because we're doing the account for 30th April. Can you see the date? That's why we want the inventory yeah, RQ. I don't want the inventory RQ. Wow. So inventory RQ, 4,680. So it's the same. The inventory RQ here is the same as the one in your account. Inventory RQ, 4,680. There must be a same. Okay, other than that, what else in your asset? Samasa. So, what else is in the debit side? Yeah. Um, that's all from here. Okay, but then remember to look outside your Imbangan Duga. This one, what do we have? Kita ada insurance prabaya. I told you the prabaya is an asset. Therefore, you have to record here insurance prabaya. How do you calculate the insurance property? We're using 2,400 times the 3 over 12 months. And then we get 600. See? So this is the asset. So I put it here. So after that, you can add up everything. Put it here first. 22,648. The bus is straight away minus from your liability semester. This is the format. All right. So your liability semester, what do you have? You go to your credit side because L is on the credit side. So SNT no, SNT already recorded here. Your account belum bayar. Account belum bayar. How much? 10,000, right? 10,790. After that, uh, 60,000 is a model. No, this one, no, read record into Berdagangan. Uh, that's all. But then when we look outside again, what else is not, is uh, a liability semester? You have to check carefully. So remember our gaji and belum bayar to your belum bayar is a liability. So you put here your gaji. Belum. Bayar. 1340. So that we put here. So that's all for the business master. So after you get this, you jumlahkan and put it in this same line with your SS master. Why? Because we want to minus it. If you want, you can put it here also. Can okay, so here because minus so you bracket. So 
After bracket, after minus, you put here. 10,500 and D. So this one, don't forget, there's a name for it. We call it a model curger. Okay, make sure you have a name for this model curger. After you get a model curger, you add up with your assembly semester. Assembly semester plus your model curger 10,518, then you get 52,000 and 38. Then one line number nine. That's a After that, you go into your equity per melee. The equity per melee, you got model awal. Is it not model awal? So model awal we can take from where? From here, lah, because this is a model by the first name, so it means the awal, model awal, 60,000. All right. Then the format for here will be model awal, tambah, undong berse, atau rugi berse. So in this case, it is a what? A rugi berse. So if it's a rugi, meaning we have to minus, lah, right? So here you just become minus. Rugi Berset. So here you just straight away take a figure from here. Lah. Uh, 4260. 6, 2, lah, not 2, 4, 2, 6, 2. So you minus. So what do you get? You get 55,738. All right, 55,738. And then you have to check, do we have ambulance? And you go back here, you check, eh, I saw my ambulance here, this is not. So if there is an ambulance, I have to minus it out as well. So here, you just take out from your business muscle. When you take out, meaning your equity per million akan berkurang. That's how we minus it. So you minus your um. Bill Lan, which is the bracket it um Bill Lan three thousand seven hundred. So you will get fifty two thousand and thirty eight. So that is your jumla. This jumla normally we call it a model up here. So is it inbound? Answer is yes. You can see these two must be inbound. And for this question, uh, there is no liability bukan semasa. All right. So if there is a liability bukan semasa, then you have to put it under. All right. If there is a liability bukan semasa, okay. So if there is no, then you can just stop here. All right. So this is your answer. So. I guess done. So I will give you two minutes again to complete this whole thing. After two minutes, then I will give you homework and we can go. All right. So you have two minutes to complete. So once you're done, you give me a D in the chat box if you're done.
All right, everyone done? Two minutes has passed. All right. So if you're not done, take photo later. Play it yourself. Okay. So now let me give you a homework. Then you can dismiss the class. So you go to page 202 and do question 28, question 29, and question 30. Three questions. All right. So please let me re-emphasize it. Okay, that this chapter, I mean, all these questions are super, super important if you are planning to continue to take accounting, the uh, principal accountant in your form five. Okay, because this is like a basic for you. So when you go to form five, for those that are already in form five, you strongly agree that much of it is from here. Okay, so if you can get all the concepts here correct, so when you go to form five, your bub, two bub, four bub, six bub, seven will not be a problem at all. But then if you struggle here, you, you don't do the questions here, you don't know what is going on here, of course, you think that you still have one year plus to your SPM time, but uh, you can delay it if you want to, but then by the time you reach form five and you want to uh, relearn everything again, then it will be uh it will be a bit too late. All right. So it's better for you to master everything now, even though if you uh later when you go and learn new chapters, you might forget some of it. But uh I can assure you is that once you learn it, you master it, you understand it already, then the next time when you do, even though you forget because you haven't do it for quite some time, but after that, if you do it again, the same thing, you find that you easily catch it up. That if, I mean, you know, you understand, right? Because I mean, not only for accounting, for other things, other things in life or other subjects, it's the same thing. As you understand it for once, even though you don't touch it for quite some time, but then when you get back to it again, uh, it's very easy for you to catch it up. Right? So that's why you must do all this question. Because at first, of course, you think it's very hard. You take times. But as you practice more and more and more, this is actually very simple stuff. You haven't even go into the degree level or the professional level yet. Okay, Because I'm there already. I can tell you that this is very, very super easy. If I show you the kind of questions that I'm doing in my exam, you will cry seriously. I mean, for your level, but then if as times goes on, you learn, you learn new things, learn new things, and then you reach that, of course, you come to my level. Uh, it is hard for sure, but then you can overcome it as well. All right. So just these three questions, make sure you do it. And uh, I will see you in the next class. All right. Take care. Goodbye.